Okay, it's time to talk about net ionic equations. I have wrote down five steps that I would suggest for how to solve or how to write a net ionic equation. The first, the first part is that you have to start with a balanced equation. It must be balanced before you go to anything else. Now, the second step is then you need to determine the solubility of each substance. I have another video about that if you don't know how to decide if something is soluble in water or not. The third step is that once you have done the first two, you need to break apart everything that is soluble in water, everything that is aqueous, into the ions that it breaks up into. The fourth step is that you will cancel everything that is exactly the same on both sides. And the fifth step is that you copy down a final reaction where you have taken out the things that canceled and you just kind of clean everything up. I'm going to work two examples for you to show you how some of these things can work. The first example that I have is, cal is calcium, sorry, potassium chloride plus lead to nitrate making potassium nitrate and lead to chloride. So if you follow my steps, it said to start with the balanced equation. Well, this isn't balanced. And if you need help with balancing, then we really need to go to a different video so that this isn't forever long. So I'm going to assume that you know how to balance. And if you look at this, um, basically we're going to balance it by putting a 2 there and a 2 there. I did that really quickly. The next thing says determine the solubility of each substance. Well, I also, in that other video that I have, use this little reference table here from, from my classes where you determine the solubility of each substance. And if you go through and do that, you'll see that the chlorides are going to be aqueous except with the, the lead in it. And then both of the nitrates will be aqueous. So we have three aqueous substances and one solid. The third step says to break apart everything that is aqueous. Well, when you break things apart, they're just breaking apart into the ions that made them originally. Um, there's two ions that make up potassium chloride. It's the ion potassium and the ion chloride. So when we break this up, it breaks up into these two things, like we just said, potassium and chlorine. The potassium ion has a plus one charge and the chlorine ion has a negative one charge. We know that from the periodic table, the number of valence electrons that they have, and then what they'll gain and lose. This two in front means that literally I have two KCLs. And if I have two units, like two groups of this thing, that will give me two potassiums and it will give me two chlorines. So that two is basically going to distribute through everything that I have written down. Now it's time to break this one up. It'll break up because it's also aqueous. It's going to break up into a lead two ion and it's going to break up into nitrate ions. Remember I can use my periodic table to determine the uh, polyatomic ions if I'm not familiar with those yet. Um, there's no coefficient in the front to distribute through, but there is a subscript right here. And when you break it up, it will break up into two NO3s. And I'm going to run short on space here. And I will put the aqueous, I will put the AQ after both of those. Forgive me for cramming it together. <laughs> potassium nitrate will break up because it's aqueous. It'll break up into potassium and it'll break up into nitrates. Well, there's a two in front that will distribute through. It's the same thing as telling me that I have two KNO3s, like KNO3 and KNO3. So that'll make two K pluses and two NO3 negatives. I saved myself a little more space this time. And then this one's easy. It won't break up at all because it says that it's solid. And I can't break up anything except for the aqueous thing, so I just leave it. My next step says on step four to cancel out everything that is exactly the same on both sides. So I see K pluses. There's two of them. They're both aqueous. So those are going to cancel out. I have two chlorine, two chlorides right here, two chlorine ions. But over here, I have two chlorines, but they're not ions. That is not exactly the same. They cannot cancel out. Same thing goes for the leads. Like right here's a lead two I or lead two ion and a lead two atom. I mean it's an ion as a part of this, but they're not written exactly the same. This one's aqueous. This one's not. Has a charge. Ha doesn't have one written right there. So they have to they stay. 
I have two NO3 negatives. They're written exactly the same, so they get to cancel out. My final step then is to go back and write all of this back down and clean it up. And I'm just going to write down the things that do not cancel. So I write down the two chloride ions. I'm going to write down my lead 2 ion. And I write down the lead 2 chloride. This right here is my net ionic equation. These are the things that um, basically came out of the reaction that do not cancel out. Um, you can check yourself in, in one way here. You can check for balance. If I have two chlorines over here, whether they're whether they have a charge written with them or not, doesn't matter. I should have two chlorines on both sides, and I do. I have one lead and one lead, and charges should also balance. The charge of an ionic compound is zero, and that means the charge of this side then has to add up to zero. Well, I have two negatives plus a positive two, and negative two plus positive two adds up to zero. So there's two different things right there checking for balance that help me know that I did this correctly. I have another example for you that comes out a little bit differently. So I chose this one for another reason. If I go through and I work with this on solubility, what I will see is that every single thing in here ends up being soluble in water. And so I did kind of to I did kind of flip my first and second steps around. You have permission to do that. You can determine solubility before you balance because solubility is not going to affect how you balance. And then in order to balance it, I'm going to have a 2 right there, a 3, a 2, and a 3. And real quick check, yes, that gives me balance. So I'm ready to move on. To the next step. I do have to do both of those steps before I can start breaking things up. So that is important. It really doesn't matter which of the first two that, that you do first. Um, breaking things up. If you look at it really fast, you'll see that if everything is aqueous, that should go ahead and tell you that every single thing that's in here will break up into ions. So we're going to we're gonna write a lot through here. This is going to get a lot bigger. Um, I may have to, to wrap it around if necessary, but we'll see if I can fit it up here on the screen. Okay, iron and nitrate are going to break up into iron 3, and it's going to be aqueous. And then it's going to break up into um, nitrate, which is NO3 negative. And then I'm going to work with the numbers. Um, there are two irons because that two distributes through. And if without the two, there are three nitrates right there with the parentheses. But there's two of the groups. There's three for every group and two groups. That'll be two times three. There's actually six nitrates that are going to be formed from this. Barium and chloride, that'll break up into barium ions, which will be aqueous. And it'll also make chlorine, chloride ions, which will also be aqueous. And then I'm going to work with the numbers. There's three of those. There's two chlorines for every purple group, and there's three of those. So that'll make six chloride ions. As we keep going, I've got iron three again. It'll be aqueous. And I've also got chloride ions again, which will be aqueous. There's two irons and there's six chlorines, two times three. And then last but not least, we have barium ions again. And we also have nitrate ions again over here, which are kind of oozing off the screen. There's gonna be three bariums and six nitrates because of the, the two per group times three. Now, it's time to cancel everything out. I'm just going to start over here at the left, and I'm going to go on the right side and see if I find the same thing. I see uh, two Fe3 pluses, and I see the same thing right there, so they cancel. Six NO3 minuses, that's the last thing I wrote on the right side. They're both aqueous. Three Ba2 pluses. 3Ba2 pluses, both aqueous, 6Cl minuses, and 6Cl minuses. Sometimes it's possible that you get a reaction where everything cancels. And if that's the case, then what I'm going to write down as a, as a net ionic equation is 
no net ionic equation. That will be my final answer in this case. There's one more possibility that I didn't work, and that possibility is that sometimes nothing will cancel. It is entirely possible to end up with a reaction where nothing cancels out, and if that's the case, then this, this middle step where you've, where you've broken up things would basically just be your final equation. So consider that that's a possibility too. If you're having trouble with determining solubility, or if you're having trouble with the breaking up of the ions, then go to the playlist that this is in and find videos on those topics to get more information.